Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Welcome back to Captains of Industry. I'm speaking to Therese Gearhart, the president of Coca-Cola Southern Africa. Just touching back on your leadership style, have you made mistakes along the way in defining the type of leader that you've become? Yes, you definitely do. I think actually becoming a great leader is self-awareness. So if you're not making mistakes, I don't think you're learning about yourself. And I think genuinely demonstrating that you can make a mistake and how you recover from that is leadership. So I, I think very much my style has been about um, self-discovery and self-awareness and not obviously not worrying about failing you know, or being able to recover. Um, and that's been a big piece of my leadership style, but being transparent about it as well, not being afraid to talk about it or say I was wrong, um, it was a mistake, et cetera. So very much so. Being a leader also means that you've got to make decisions. Absolutely. Has that always been a forte of yours? Absolutely. I think the one thing I've always believed is take a decision. You know, make a decision. Now, you always are going to evaluate on any big decision you're making, understanding the consequences of the alternative one you could have taken, because then when you take it, whether you're right or wrong, you feel good about it. You knew it was going to, you knew what the alternatives were, and you were thoughtful about them, but always take the decision. So, inaction is definitely a no go in your book. Yeah, no, no, no action. I mean, you just want to, you know, give your best thinking, get the best input, but they're looking to you in leadership to take action and make a decision take the decision. Therese, did you anticipate that you would be working for Coca-Cola and at such a high level? Um, I anticipated once I joined, you know, when, when, when Coca-Cola, I got the call to join in general management to interview, I should say, it was a thrill, obviously, to, uh, to um, come work for a great company. And from the day I entered, I said I wanted to be a business unit president or more. <laughs> and I set my sights high. And I was pretty open about um, communicating what I believed I could do and my desires were. Um, you touch on a very important point because I've recently spoken to a number of captains of industry and one of their key uh, areas of advice is be visible. Right. State your intent and make sure people know what you can do and what you're about. So that's what you're willing. Key, that's been key to your strategy. No question. No question. You can't expect people to guess. Right, they can't guess. You know, are you, you know, are you, are you in a situation where you could be mobile? That you actually would want experiences that would put you at that level. Um, you, Have you've people ever said you're aggressive though? Because you also stand the risk, particularly being a female, yes. of people saying, "But you're incredibly aggressive in your stance." Yes. Yeah. No, and I think it's in the approach. I've never felt like I've overstepped my bounds on what I was ready to handle or be deserving of. Right. So I, I do obviously think it's in the approach, and you don't need to be aggressive to make it clear what you would love to be able to do for a company you know, with, with the right tools. Um, so uh, I do believe it's in the way you handle, but aggressive has not been a word that's been used with me. In terms of building the team and the type of people that you like to surround yourself with, what do you look for? You know, I really look for individuals that carry similar values that are also part of Coca-Cola. You're gonna look for people with high integrity, you know, transparency, genuineness, um, willingness to learn, um, you know, honesty, th those type of traits that, you know, even if they've got development to do, they're going to face it head on. You know, passion, obviously, for what you're doing. A big thing is passion, people being self-aware about what they love to be doing, um, because otherwise they can sort their way, you know, differently. So I, I, I really look on the values front um, for the fit in an individual, because everything else can be nurtured, developed, um, etc. Most captains tell me that balance is a myth. Are you in that camp? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in that camp. Um, I wouldn't say balance is a myth. I think balance... I'm so relieved to hear <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, you know, we, they, they say life integration, right? We make our choices. And I view my choices as ones I make. I don't think about balance. What am I balancing? home with work, this is life integration. These are choices we're making. So, um, I'm, and I'm making them um, actively for myself. And I'm making them in communication with my family. They're aware of the choices I'm making, why I'm working longer or when I don't. Um, and I tell them what I'm doing and get them involved in it. But I don't consider it a 
lack of balance issue. It's one a of, choice. What, one of my favorite female CEOs is Nikki Newton King, CEO of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And she once shared some very valuable advice in that she, again, is very open and transparent. If she is watching her son's rugby game, it is diarized as such from three to four, son's rugby. Absolutely. Would you advocate the same? Oh no, I absolutely have that. Everyone knows exactly that I'm, and, and, and really your team loves to see that. They love to see, you know what, I'm going to go to the 10 o'clock play, right? I am pretty diligent about leaving between 5.30 and 6 p.m. I mean, obviously you're going to have those extreme circumstances where you might need to work late, but I'm very big about prioritizing your work and making sure that you're creating an environment where people get home and they go home and you demonstrate that. I do believe you have to role model it um, to get the organization to, to want to do it and feel comfortable that they can do it. I think that's the biggest issue is associates don't feel, they're not sure if people are really saying you know, they can go home, et cetera. So I've really worked hard to bust that myth. So take me through a day in your diary. So a day in my diary would be, I pretty much wake up at 5.30, 5, 5, 5.30 in the morning. I love spending the morning with my kids. So I'm the one that gets them out the door. I never leave before they exit the house. And I love making them breakfast. I love cooking. So I'm usually up, I pack their lunches, make their breakfast, get their book bags together. I'm the last person they kiss when they leave the house. And then I scramble, get ready for work. Usually you're clearing email as you move, you know, multitasking. Um, so what time are you at your desk? I would probably be at my desk by nine every morning. And I leverage time in the car for work. I'm very fortunate that I do use the driver and that's huge for me. I mean, having certain support systems absolutely. to balance. You can or start making your phone calls, you've done, diary absolutely. entries. So um, I really utilize time in the car for emails, voice conferences, and then time at work to be with my team. And uh, typical day would definitely be leaving somewhere between 5 and 6 p.m. That's very typical. Home, eat with the kids. Um, homework? Homework, uh, definitely. I've got three children, 15, 13, and 10. So, so you've um, got your hands full hands both full, at work and at Absolutely, home. and hands full in finding individual time. So that usually goes on till about 9.30. Um, my kids have pretty good set time. Um, the 10-year-old's 8.30, the 13-year-old's 9, the 15-year-old gets 10. That gives me a little bit of alone time with each one of them before their bedtimes. And then I'll return to casual, I love reading my email and catching up, even if I don't respond, because I don't want people to have to respond back to me. So I'm pretty good about checking email, answering in draft, and then releasing it in the morning. Uh -oh. And travel, you must be very afraid I with travel traveling, considering your work in all the emerging Absolutely. markets. Absolutely. Travel's always been a part of my life and part of my kids' life since they were born. So they're very aware and familiar with how to get through the day without mom. So do you uh, keep your, your trips short, especially within the Southern Ad yeah, African now that it's, region? You know, for me, now that it's Southern Africa, it's a lot simpler. Um, when I was running marketing commercial customer for Eurasia Africa Group headquarters, and I was traveling India, et cetera, you know, it was a lot more difficult. But again, the kids uh, are used to managing me that way. That was not a new element uh, in our family dynamic. Um, so, and then Skype and communications and you know, all the technology helps a lot to stay in touch. I want to chat now about your, your network and specifically whether you have a strong female CEO executive management network outside of the Coca-Cola group because for me this has been one of the biggest gaps in corporate South Africa and in Africa is the dearth of women in leadership positions. Yes, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, inside the company we obviously do a great job. In fact, I'm part of the Global Women's Leadership Council and there's 17 of us that lead the agenda for Mutar, Kent, uh, for the company. Outside, it's more difficult, and especially when I'm moving a lot. But what I am finding is I do a lot of reaching out one-on-one -on -one to other female CEOs. You know, Puti at Shanduka Group is an example, and we're in the business together. I've just, in fact, I've just interviewed Puti. Did you? Oh. <laughs> so she's a fan with all these questions as well. Exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. So I do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, um, but I have not yet, in my year that I've been in this role, done enough to network them together. I've been working hard at networking our bottling system female leaders together. And, and then more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I would say, but um, I do need to get more active in probably generating that network uh, of getting the, the community together. So, Do to you have a view on female executive pay and why women are generally underpaid in comparison to, to male counterparts? Or is it a no-go area for you? Um, it's because it's, it's a no-go at Coke. It's not that, that you know, for us, that's not a topic. Now, in country, 
Um, again, inside Coke, we're paying fair market value, male or female, it doesn't matter. So I don't have a lot of insight as it relates to why other companies would have a differential. Um, but I know that I know that exists. I'm just not experiencing, nor would my organization be experiencing it. Having worked all over the world, do you see yourself forming a base now in South Africa, or will you be striving for the next region once you've you've done your work here? Well, if I'm lucky enough, they'll just keep giving me more geography and let me right here. <laughs> I love South Africa, and um, so no, um, I've just started this journey. So I have a, I'm sure I have a lot of time here, but obviously I'll never stop striving for anything the company would want for me next, or that I would. How, how long have you typically found yourself in a given position role? within Coca-Cola? Um, anywhere between two to four years. Two to four years has been the average for me. And then in terms of progression, do you work with coaches to say, you know, what is the next stage? I mean, would you aim to be CEO of Coke Global one day? Sure, sure. I'd say, me, Tar, I want to give you a run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I don't use coaches, um, honestly. I'm, I do talk to a lot of other females. Um, and men. I talk to a lot of men about it as well. And again, um, I think now I've gotten to a point where it's more about making sure I'm still getting what I want for me and my family. It's a little more holistic as you move, but I do not limit any possibility. I am ready for anything that would come my way. And different industries, would they attract you having had such a, a long career within uh, Coca-Cola? No, I absolutely have zero desire to look outside Coca-Cola. I mean, really, it's such an honor to work for a company that already does such good. Um, and um, I, I love our vision, I love our mission, I love our values. It's a great fit for me. And the work I see I have to do here, and that I'm able to do here, with the tools we're given, I, would, I, I have no desire. What is your strategy for the Southern African region? Where do you want to be four years out? Uh, or, or what do you want to have achieved four years out in terms of, of Southern Africa? In Southern Africa, I would have wanted to continue to deliver exactly the beverages consumers want, continue to be delivering them affordably and available to all you know, regardless of the disparity. I would want to have been very successful at engaging. Um, I talked about the golden triangle of government, civil society, and companies in the social responsibility of improving the communities sustainably. Are you actively forging public-private partnerships in yes, certain spaces? Yes, we do all the time. And um, one of the things I say is create the opportunity for every um, um, citizen in Southern Africa to enjoy a Coca-Cola. And I say that deliberately because creating the opportunity means you can create the economic empowerment for them to buy one and you create the love for them to want to buy one. So I, that's what I really aspire for. So Therese, other young women that mm -hmm. are watching this show, yes. what is your advice specifically to those females that want to occupy the seat of a captaincy of a big global company at some stage down the line? I would say to those young ladies that not to get caught up in mental models and barriers that you perceive you can't get somewhere. That you aim for where you want to get to and you go. And do not allow the way things have been done to make you feel guilty or to make you think you can't. Um, be open and communicate what you desire to do, but don't get caught in the small stuff. Just stay focused on the big and trust that you'll find a network and a way to get there. Therese, thanks so much for your time. It was wonderful. It's been a Thank pleasure. you so much. I've been speaking to Therese Gerhardt, the president of Coca-Cola Southern Africa, and you've been watching this special edition of Captains of Industry coming to you from the World Economic Forum on Africa here in Cape Town.